Okay, for our last example, we're going to go over how to graph data. Before we get started, um, I just want to talk a little bit about how we do math operations in Excel. Now, there's all kinds of operators. You've seen them already. We use this plus sign here. We've used the minus sign before. All of these can be found in Excel's wonderful help files. So I just want to take a look at that first. If we go up to help and click this, it'll bring up all this information of everything you wanted to know about Excel. Let's go ahead and go to formula and name basics, creating formulas, and overview of formulas. Now this is a big write-up of how you can make a formula. You start with the equal sign, we can multiply, we can raise something to a power. If you scroll down, it gives all the information you can need. Here's all the operators you can use and what they do. And if you scroll down even further, um, there's something very important to note, and that's operator precedence. Now what operator precedence is, it's the order in which Excel does something. So we already saw in the last example how if we put parentheses around something, it will do that part first. And you'll see that here. If it's in parentheses, it will do that first. And then it goes down the list. It'll make something negative. It will do percent. Then it will do exponentiation. And it goes down the list. So take a look at these so that when you're putting in your formulas, you make sure that they're all doing everything in the right order. So be sure to use Excel's help files when you get stuck or you need to look something up because it's a fantastic resource for you. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to an unused sheet like this and we're going to to graph some data. The first thing we'll want to do is label our data. So we're going to type angle in here. I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to hit do another angle, hit tab sine of x. So this means this is what our data is going to be. Now next when we have something like this we'll want to specify what units we're in. So we're going to stay in degrees here Oops. and then we're going to convert it to radians. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Now just like we did before I'm going to enter a 0 here, hit enter, do a 5, hit enter and I'm going to use the autofill function to go all the way down to A75 and that should get us to 360. So we're going to go from 0 to 360 degrees. Now in radians, now we're going to make our first little formula. Now there's the, e the easiest way to convert from degrees to radians is to actually use a pre-built function inside of Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to press equals and I'm going to type radians parenthesis and I'm gonna click the square right here and hit enter and you'll see if we autofill this all the way down to 360 degrees that instead of going from 0 to 360 it's gonna go from 0 to 2 pi so it just converted that to radians also of note you remember when we when we do this we could change the dollar signs here so it would be absolute instead so instead of referencing all the different things we can we can choose to always reference the same cell over and over again before what we'd do is we'd do something like this if you remember from the last example but an easier way to do this in case we wanted to is to go ahead and highlight this let's see highlight this and hit F4 and that'll do that for us we don't need that so we'll just keep it back at A3, but that's something, a nice little shortcut that you can use when you need to do something like that. Now finally, let's, uh, oops, sorry. Let's go ahead and, and make the sign of this. So we're going to make another formula. We're going to say equals sign, parenthesis, select this one, hit enter. And you'll notice whenever sign is used inside of Excel, it needs radians in order to work instead of degrees. So converting to radians is what we want. Now you'll notice down here we have this strange number, this negative 2.5 e minus 16. Now this means one of two things. One, it means that it is scientific notation. So instead of times 10 to the negative 16, the way that Excel does that is e minus 16. So if I wanted to enter 
a scientific notation number, I would do something like 2.5 E minus 15. And it's converted that a little bit more to be user friendly, but that's how you would you would put something like that in. Now another thing is is the reason why it has the small number instead of zero is Excel has round off error. Now you shouldn't ha need to worry about that too much but because this is 2 pi here and it's not quite 2 pi in Excel's mind, it doesn't have all the digits of pi, it just makes the answer very close to zero instead of actually being zero. So that's something to watch out for. Okay now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot this data. So the first thing I'll do is I want to select my x-axis first. So I'm going to highlight all the degrees. I'm going to go down to 75. And then I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to hold down control and select this column because this is going to be my y-axis. Okay, now if those two selected like that, I can go up to insert, let's scroll up so it inserts it near the top. We can insert a scatter plot, and we're going to do this one scatter with straight lines. And there's our, our formula that pops up on the screen like that. Now we'll want to make it look a little bit prettier. So the first thing we'll notice is that it tried to extend it all the way to 400, and we don't want that. We want it to quit at 360. So if we select the axes, mouse over that, and right click, we can format axes. The minimum's fine, it starts at zero, but let's fix the last one to 360. And our major unit, it counts up by 100 each time, but let's count up by 60 degrees. And now when we close this, you'll notice that we go from zero to 360 and it counts up by 60s. Next, let's, uh, let's label our axes so that people reading the graph can easily see what is going on here. We are going to go to in the, um, the layout tab and we're going to, we are going to add axes titles. So we're going to have to select this and we're going to make a horizontal axes and title below. We can double click this and we're going to say this is the angle and just so they know what units it is, we're going to add that. Same thing with our Y axis, we're going to make a vertical axis and let's do a rotated title and select all that and the Y axis is just going to be the sine, oops, sine of X. Okay, so now we have those labels. Let's also give a label to our entire, our entire plot. And we do that by adding a chart title. And we're going to, we're going to go above the chart like this. And we're going to just type in sign X in degrees. Now finally we have this series here and it says series one. It doesn't know exactly for the legend what the series is called. So let's go ahead and tell it that. We want to go up to the design tab and we're going to select data and then where it says series one let's click that and edit it and let's change the series name to sign X. That way when we hit OK and OK again, this is changed over so we know exactly what the blue line is. This is helpful when we have multiple graphs on top of each other. We can label the different colors different things. Now finally, I don't really like where this is stationed. So let's go to layout and go to legend and let's say show legend at the bottom. So it'll put it down there. So this allows us to make all kinds of graphs that we can print out. We can put it anywhere in our worksheet. We can even print it separately if we need to. And it allows us to take data and put them in a very easy to read format for other people to see. Well that's been it for our first Excel tutorial. Um,
So get out there and use Excel. Thanks for listening.